Hey everybody. Well, I thought I'd just continue from this morning and do some more cutting out of the, like taking apart the magazines and um, for the Daphne's Diary. And so I'm making all seven. <laughs> I'm just going to be ambitious. I have six people I am going to make this for. So I'm just going to go ahead and do all seven. And so it'll be kind of to start sort of assembly line, except that I, you know, like I know for, you know, there's some things I know I want a certain, uh, for certain people a certain way. So I have that, in, you know, all that in mind too. But for now, I would just like to get pages um, torn off and apart and such. I've been wanting to do this, like I said, for a long time. So it's pretty, I'm pretty happy that I finally um, get to do this. You know, I think these are kind of in signatures. So if I go and do like this, it feels like I'm going to um, get, uh, this is going to work a whole lot better for taking apart. So that is what I'm doing. So then I just come back up here. Anyway, I thought since I'm just going to sit here and tear stuff apart, and if you want to craft along while I'm doing it, um, and just listen to me ramble, then that's kind of what this video is like. It's probably a good one to just um, throw on and do some journaling on your own, of your own, unless you want to see me tear pages apart <laughs> and talk. And um, I, let's talk about um, places we would, we've lived in and what we like the best. Like, what's our, what's your ideal place? So, I'm going to share about places I've lived in, what I liked, which I liked, um, what I liked about each one, and which ones I liked which one I like the best and then what I would like my my dream place where I would like to live um, so you can please feel free to comment what you like down below and go ahead and find something to do and I hope uh, you don't mind listening to me so I mostly grew up in the country we did live in a small town, in a small town, maybe a couple times, but mostly we lived in the country and we rented uh, like our first eleven houses and our and my parents' first eleven years together. They were in like a, rented like eleven houses. You know, we were never long in one place. So, uh, but when I turned nine, the day I turned nine, we moved to land that my mom built my mom built. We moved to land that my mom's mother gave the money for my parents to buy. And it was out in southeast Minnesota where we actually had been living all along. But it was a different, you know, and then we went to Wyckoff School. And that was, um, the place we moved to was about five miles from the school my grandparents and my aunt and uncle lived a quarter mile down the road. My uncle was our school bus driver. And then our church was in the village of Fillmore, about two miles from where we lived, and then three miles more to the little town of Wyckoff, which is 450 people, and it was a, it's a farming community. My dad graduated from the same high school that I graduated from. So, um... 
that's another interesting thing, I think. I, I mean, I think that was that was pretty cool. Now, my parents met in New York, so my mom lived out east in Pennsylvania all her life. And so they came back here after my dad had his training with IBM. But anyway, my dad grew up uh, a farmer's kid. And he, um, so what, he of course went to IBM and he worked the night shift and he drove, um, I think it was like 20 miles to work, you know, more or less. So, but we got this piece of property from a bachelor farmer and he lived across the road and he sold us the other piece. And it was 38 acres and a good portion of it was part of the National Hardwood Forest. And then there was um, a lot of, um, there was a hay field, there was some pasture land, and um, that was pretty much how it was, so. And there wasn't any um, running water. There was a well, so there was a pump, pump for the well. So, like I said, we moved to this place on my ninth birthday. My parents, the only thing on it, there was a, a pole barn that either fell down or my dad took down or something. There was a chicken coop. There was a small like cow shed for the cow, if you had cows, so it was kind of a shed. There was um, another shed that maybe could have been used for a garage. We didn't use it for that, but it had big enough doors it could have been a garage. But it was kind of like a machine shed, I guess. And that, and a cabin, a little cabin, like a one-room cabin, with a a, be, a tiny bedroom, and then the rest. And it was very small. And we were a family with six kids, so my parents bought a trailer house and attached it to the cabin with an entryway. And they made a partitioned-off part of the bedroom or of the cabin's living room for my brother and then they made well, one little room was for my dad and the other area across from that they made another room for because our root cellar collapsed they made it into a freezer a cool room and like kind of like an indoor root cellar and then we had that little family room then in the trailer there was one big bedroom and my brother's my three, three, my other, my other three brothers had that room, and then we had one bathroom, and then we had a very small bedroom that my sister and I shared, and then my mom slept on the pull-out couch in the living room, which we actually turned in, the living room we actually made into the dining room, because we had a huge table, so we put the table in there, and we had a couch and a, my mom's rocking chair, and it was a pull-out couch, so my mom would pull that out every night to sleep on until like, cause she and my dad, you know, he worked nights and so it was just easier. They just slept apart, you know, apart because he had, he would sleep, you know, in much later. And so that would have been pretty disruptive, I think, um, for both of them. So that's kind of how that worked. And uh, you know, that was normal for us. The kitchen was very tiny. There was a little bitty eating kitchen area um, that just kind of helped serve for extra space. And we had a regular stove. Actually, for a while, we had this big wood-burning stove that was really cool. Though I did accidentally lay the palm of my hand on it when I was young and burnt the palm of my hand. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So that's where I grew up. So um, I gave you all that background so you know that I grew up in the country and I also grew up um, freely being able to run through the woods and, you know, really enjoy that type of um, lifestyle. So that's why I love nature so much. I love bird watching. I like love rocks and 
trees and flowers and just all that sort of thing. I spent many, many hours um, in the woods and it was just, you know, that that's what made my heart happy. And it's, it's what I love today as well, even though that's not my living situation. It's still, you know, my favorite type of thing. And, um, so if I, so that's one place I lived. Then, um, after I graduated from high school, I went to college up in the cities in Minneapolis, but in the suburb of Bloomington. And at that point in time, it was still not built up a whole lot around the school. And there was a lot of, um open land around, plus um, Isaac Walton Nature Center and refuge kind of area where you, there was all kinds of nature stuff. So I was able to, you know, get my bit of nature in that area, fortunately, because that, you know, that was just where that was my place. And then for my third year of school we did internships and I went to the Bahamas for my year so I lived on an island so okay so I lived on a, in a college kind of in a suburb I guess and then I lived on an island for a year a tropical island and that was really cool um, we lived up on a big hill and we could see um, we had a really good view of the uh, we could actually see the ocean and, you know, there was just something totally foreign and new to me, you know, from what I had grown up with. And then um, after school, we went to Mexico as missionaries and lived there for 15 years. So that was, um, that was another experience that was very um, good, different, of course, but, but very good as well for me. And um, I loved Mexico. It was totally different. We lived at a in a school setting as setting as well, which we had a nice, a, a fair amount of land. But we lived outside of town, so it was um, high desert plains, which meant it was semi-arid. And there were mesquite trees and dirt and cactus and um, mountains. And we didn't. There weren't a lot of things could, couldn't grow. So I did love, I did come to love the mountains and the cactus. I love cactus. Fair, I still do. And there were hardly any wildlife or birds because of the type of land we lived in. So we didn't really get to see very much hummingbirds and um, tanager, the, what is that? It's a tanager flycatcher? Anyway, whatever it is. That was the one bright bird we had. So that was 15 years. Then 20 years ago, we moved back up here to Minnesota and we lived in Bloomington again, um, a suburb. And bought a house, and later bought a townhouse <laughs> and later moved, sold that and moved to an apartment. So like right now we're just living in an apartment. Um, and we've been in an apartment now for two years. And at least in all the other places I lived, I could still, because um, it's a big city, I could still go to uh, feed the birds and have some plants, a uh, garden of sorts, well, garden for sure on one, and pots for the other, and had trees around me and there were parks there's parks and all kinds of stuff but in the apartment I can't feed the birds and it's just not the same and I really um, miss that tremendously and I miss having um, a yard or something of that sort and so um, we might rent a house if we can find one next year next summer so we'll see we shall see what's going to happen with all that. Because I would much rather rent a house than an apartment. But, you know, who knows? Who knows? That's just one of those things. 
But you just, you know, we're just gonna have to see. This is kind of the magazine paper again, and I just put that aside because I want the magazine paper um, for just using to give away or cut up or whatever. I'm not gonna put that in because it's shiny and I don't wanna put, I don't wanna put shiny paper in the junk journals. Huge section in here. But that's fine because that's a nice bit that can be given away. Anyway, so that's our living situations. So my favorite place to live that I lived was where I grew up in the country. Um, I really loved that the best. My second favorite place was in um, Mexico. Then probably Bloomington, you know, and then probably lastly, uh, the island, Nassau, Bahamas, where I lived for a year, that was probably last. You're probably thinking I'm crazy, because that's not my favorite, but it isn't. Anyway, um, so that's how that was. Oh, I must have torn some tags out of here. Oops. Dang it, anyway. <laughs> oh well, most of this gets trimmed, so it's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, so my dream place, well, I want to be close to my family, especially my granddaughter. But if I had my dream place, and I didn't have to worry about where, it would be um, Southeast Minnesota in a small town that has a nice big yard, like a beautiful backyard with lots of trees and um, a front porch. I want a front porch so bad. <laughs> and that's what I would like. Not in the country, because I feel like this time in life would be too isolated, but a small town. A beautiful country-like piece of land around the house. And then, um, but since I want to stay close to my kids and my granddaughter, then my next choice would be um, in a, one of these area, you know, a suburb like this. But I would want a home, the same thing with a, I would want a fenced in backyard. And then I could do whatever I wanted with the birds and stuff like that and not have to worry about neighbors. So that would be my dream. Anyway, that got us through two magazines. <laughs> but what about you guys? Um, tell me what you, what appeals to you. I think that's why I like Daphne's Diary because there's so much of country and outdoors um, that feel to it. That I think that that is, um, I think that's what appeals to me about it more than anything. That's what I would have to say. At least I figured out the easy way to do this because it was getting a little complicated. But, um, yeah, that would make me super happy. So, who knows, right? Who knows what the next venture in my life will be? I, I honestly don't see us staying in apartment life for much longer. Um, I would like to either rent or buy a house. I doubt, don't know that we would ever be, we'd be in position to buy a house. But um, I would definitely rent a house. You know, I feel like when we sold our townhouse, the market was getting, it was hot. It was getting, it was really getting hot. And um, so houses were going fast, but townhouses were not going fast. 
and we had a heck of a time selling our townhouse. And then on top of that, we ended up having to replace the windows, the patio door, the air conditioner, and the heat, the heat, the furnace. So that was just like a huge hit. And then we weren't able to sell it for as much as we wanted to. So I really wish that, I mean, in hindsight, I kind of wish we had just pulled it off the market and waited instead of selling it so quickly. But, you know, what is it they say about hindsight, right? <laughs> Things don't always work out the way, you know, you would like them to. And that's just life, so that's how it goes, right? So we just gotta, you know, look look forward and not, you know, can't live, I can't live, you know, in regrets about what I wish we had done and how things, I wish things could have been different. But I can look forward to maybe, you know, something more along the lines of what I dream about being type of a whole, you know, a house situation. But the problem is, right now anyway, maybe by next fall or next summer it won't be like this. But right now, the housing market is so tight and it's, you know, it's just hard to get even like stuff, anything to rent decent, you know, or just to rent, period. It's just, it is not easy right now, so. We will see, right? Oh, this is coming along super well. And I'm almost done, which is probably good because I have exhausted this topic, I think. Oh my goodness. To, oh, and this is beautiful. To no end. So I probably don't need to be like going on and on forever and ever here, do I? <laughs> so yeah. I think it's a good thing I came to a stopping point. And I hope you enjoyed. Uh, hope you found something to do while I was doing this. I'm half tempted to keep like going and, you know, folding papers in half. But um, I think I'll just wait. Yeah, so I have all kinds of things to you know that I can do with Daphne's diary as you saw we have pulled out a gazillion things and I have a bunch of things already ready to go which is exciting too so that's kind of fun and um I should, I mean, I could go through, like here, I, I pretty much figured, okay, I'll just go a little bit longer, um, 23 minutes. I figured I probably should just leave this one because, um, well, I can take out like this type of page, but really, um, because I already used this, um, there really isn't a lot I could actually pull out that isn't already backed up onto stuff I wrote. Yeah, I think I had gone through this and just made sure um, that I had anything out, even though some of this stuff I really like. But, I mean, I could pull it out and use it for mine because it's my stuff. But as far as anybody else being able to, not so much. So, that one, no. But this one, this one I can do a lot because I don't really use this um, all that much. So, I could just take off. You know, if I could just, I wouldn't have to tear these out. Ooh. <laughs> Let's do this. 
let's do this so that I don't have to tear out my pages. I just have to, it has to go this way. I just have to go like this. So I wouldn't have had to tear out that, which is kind of nice because you know what you can do is use, um, like you could kind of decorate with string if I wanted to down through these holes. Why is this one being so stubborn? There we go. Oh, that worked. <laughs> now, how about that for perfect? This one, no. And there's just a couple that are not really pretty pages. This is fine because it explains. And then you do have a lot of really pretty stuff which is really nice. Now I did, okay, so I did do some pages and I think I'm gonna take the pages I did and put them with my old one because I started something new, but I didn't, I, I don't have a record, so I kinda wanna keep those pages. But otherwise, I think, I'm trying to see how far I went before I changed my mind about what I was doing. So that's kind of what I'm checking here. Cause I don't remember how far I went. Oh, right there. So I went through March. I did three months, <laughs> three months. So we're just going to put that right here and maybe what I should do is put 2018 so I know exactly and then that can just go with my journals that I keep from year to year. So that gives me all of this lovely, beautiful, unused um, papers. Um, which is going to be so awesome. So, yay! <laughs> I like that. I feel like it is totally going to come together um, just beautifully. So I'm super excited about this whole project. And so thanks for watching. I guess I better stop. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody.